evening's um, presentation as well. So in case there's any technical difficulties, hopefully you'll be able to, um, we'll make that available later. All right, I'll just share my screen now. And that will enable us to, a moment. All right, great. So obviously this evening we really want to welcome you to Year 12 at Gisborne Secondary College. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is uh, acknowledge um, the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today. I would also like to pay my respects to the elders, both past, present and emerging. I just want to run through the e this evening's schedule. So we'll obviously just do a bit of a welcome and, and introduce you to some of the key people that are working with our students in year 12 this year. Then Sarah Rose will speak to you about the ATAR and just give you, hopefully demystify that a little bit for you. Um, then I will talk through some VCE requirements and coursework. We'll talk about some strategies for supporting VCE students to succeed. And then we'll talk, have someone from careers talk about transition from school and beyond. So that's sort of the focus of this evening. Now, we, as I said, we want to introduce you to the key people and let you know the people you might hear from or that your students might talk about in the course of the year. So we have our senior school assistant principal in Sarah Rose. And as I said, she'll be talking to you about the ATAR a little later on. Our senior school student management leader is Richard Palmer. And you'll also hear from him later in this presentation. There's myself, the senior school programs leader, our year 12 coordinator, Greg Savinos, our wellbeing leader, Belinda O'Mara, and our careers teacher, John DeCoolin. I also want to mention our senior school support staff that we have here in the office in the senior school and in our study centre, Annette Clark and Heather Livermore. They do a mountain of work supporting our students uh, throughout the year and have a really key role to play. All right, so just to run through some of our important dates um, on the calendar this year. So in throughout term one and term two, the primary focus will be working through our coursework, our SACs and our SATs. So our SACs and our SATs are our key assessment tasks that students will be doing throughout year 12. On the 9th of June, that's a Wednesday, we have the GAT, the General Achievement Test. And as we discovered in 2020, this is a really important um, exam for VCE students because it's that, um, that backup if anything should happen in the end of year exams and it also gives us um, a really good opportunity to work on our exam skills um, and those sorts of things so it's it's a really important date that June 9 GAT date. Term three we'll be going through coursework SATs and SATs again but we'll also be starting to support students in VTAC applications um, there'll be an info night around that and just the process of applying for um, tertiary courses and, and things like that. In term four, we'll have our revision lectures happening. And I'll talk about those a little more later in um, this presentation. Our final classes. So the final um, date, I, I didn't pop it on there, but the final date for, for school classes is actually the 19th of October. And that's a Tuesday. And we'll have a bit of a celebration on that day. So in reality, the, the last real classes for your um, students will be on the 18th of October. It says here that exams commence on the 27th of October and that's true for all our written exams but if your student is doing a language or is doing a performance subject such as dance or drama they will have an exam earlier than that because the oral and performance exams take place they start earlier in term four. And finally our graduation dinner is set for November. All right, so just before I pass you on to Sarah Rose, I also just wanted to take a moment to congratulate all our students on how well they've started this year. We've been so impressed with uh, the way our, our year 12s have come in, the way they're studying, the way they're keeping up with their coursework and engaging with their studies, the way they're using our study center. It's, it's been really impressive. And I think it really goes to show some of the resilience that they've built in 2020 in what was a really tough year 11 year for them. So I wanted to acknowledge that and commend them on, on how they've started the year. All right, I'll pass you over to Sarah Rose. Oh, Richard, sorry. 
Richard Palmer's going to jump in next. Hi, Rod. Just a quick change in uh, the format there. Um, just wanted to jump on and say hi. I'm obviously, as Lauren mentioned, the senior school um, leader, and I work in terms of student management and wellbeing. So I work closely with the wellbeing team also. Um, looking forward to really working closely with, with families and students this year, um, hopefully for a much better year than what we experienced last year. As Lauren mentioned, uh, we're off to a really, really good start with the way the kids are being uh, prepared for class and use of the study centre and their interactions with each other. It's, um, it's really, really pleasing to see. So we're really looking forward to um, continuing that throughout the duration of the year. And we're looking forward to working with families and students um, through the course of year 12 um, and to, to support to have um, some successful outcomes. And that was all, just wanted to jump on and introduce myself. Um, thanks everyone for joining in and I'll hand over to, to Sarah Rose. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so my role tonight is to talk to you all about study scores and ATAR calculations. Those of you who were at the Year 11 Information Night last year would have heard me talk a little bit about this already. Tonight is a bit more of a detailed presentation, but there will be some similarities. So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about um, was the calculation of study scores. Now we've got a short video to watch. Um, let's just see if we can make it work. Hopefully everybody can see that. I'm just going to stop there for one second. Can someone give me a thumbs up to confirm that you can hear it? We've got audio there. No audio. Okay. I will have to talk you through it then. Just give me one second. What we'll do is we'll make sure that we put a PowerPoint link up to this, uh, probably through your child's team's account so that you can actually go on and access it yourselves. Um, it's basically the study score is what your children will be working towards and for any students out there tonight, what you'll be working towards in each of your subjects this year. So every VCA subject attaches to it a study score, which is determined using the calculation on the screen. So all of the school assessed coursework that you do in unit three, so which is terms one and two, all of the unit four school-based assessment that you do in terms three and four, plus your exam and that is calculated together to provide a ranking of how you have performed relative to the rest of the state. Um, most unit three and unit four markings will be out of 100 so all students will receive a score out of 100 from their classroom teacher at the end of the semester or the end of each semester. This is however subject to statistical moderation which I'm going to talk a little bit about. It's really important to have a bit of an idea about statistical moderation because it's really, really important to understand that the marks that students are receiving in class in year 12 are not necessarily the same as the marks they'll receive at the end of the year. So what VCAR basically do is they moderate all of the scores that are sent in from teachers uh, before they calculate the ATAR score. So this is because all schools will assess their students using a different scale. So it'll be a different SAC, there'll be different varieties of challenge around the SACs and obviously teachers will assess differently. What's really important is that there is consistency within a school and we work very carefully um, to ensure consistency across classes, both in the development of curriculum, but also in the moderation of SACs. What VCAR will do is convert the scores that get sent off to them and they will moderate based against the student's exam result. And it basically means that it converts it to a common scale so that they can rank all of the students in Victoria um, the same way. What teachers do in addition to the student's marks is we create a ranking. So our top student is our top student. And no matter whether their official mark gets changed, they will always remain a top student. So the student who performed the best in say biology, they will remain the top student in biology, even if their marks are moderated down and that's against their exam result. So 
students will still get the right score, but they might be different. And it's really just important to be aware of that so there are no surprises at the end of the year. I've put a little link down the bottom to a brochure that's produced by VCART, gives a bit more information about the statistical moderation process. So again, you'll be able to directly link to that um, if you want to have a bit more of a read and you're more than welcome to get in touch and ask any questions uh, following this. The next complicated part of the process, and again, this is really a very brief overview, is the scaling of study scores. So VCAR will calculate the study score based on the student's school-based assessment and their exam assessment. But what happens following that VCAR process is that there is a scaling process used by VTAC, the Victorian Tertiary Admission Centre, and that is made um, prior to the ATAR being calculated. So there are lots of myths around scaling of study scores um, and you often hear people say oh it's because if you do a really hard subject it goes up and if you do a really easy subject it goes down. What the scaling actually does is it varies from year to year and it varies depending on the strength of the competition in the subject. So where you have a cohort of students who are performing at a very high level that might be streamed, that might be scaled up and where you have a lower level of performance that might be, be scaled down. So it's not about how hard a subject is perceived to be, it's about the quality and the competition of the students within the subject. So once VCAR or VTAC scales that study score, it's then used to calculate the ATAR score, which I'm gonna spend a bit more time on. So the ATAR is the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank and it is a percentile ranking that reflects a student's performance compared to their age group in a given year. It's not a score, it's not a, um, it, it, you know, it's not an A plus or an A, it's a, a ranking in comparison to other people. Um, and it's also not a pass or a fail. So Lauren will talk a little bit after this about, um, about gaining satisfactory achievement in your VCE subjects. It's not, you're not required to get an ATAR or to get a good ATAR to pass year 12. It's a separate component. What you will need an ATAR for is for tertiary entrance. So for university particularly and for some TAFE courses. So what the ATAR allows tertiary institutions to do is to rank students and then be able to make some decisions about who they let into their courses. So, uh, it, you know, you probably all know this already, but the ATAR is a number between zero and 99.95. So it's a percentile. So as an example there, you can see that a student who receives an ATAR of 75 has achieved results above 75% of the year 12 group. The way the ATAR score is scaled, uh, it, it takes in the subjects that students study. Um, it must take in English or literature or English language. All of you, all students will be doing one of those subjects, some might be doing more. It then takes the next three top scale study scores. So all students in year 12 or most students in year 12 will complete five subjects. We have quite a large number of students who've also done a year 12 subject in year 11. So they have six subjects from which their ATAR can be calculated. So we take English, lit or language, then we take the next three best scaled scores, and then we take 10% of any fifth and or sixth ATAR subject score that we've got. So they're the lowest score. So up, all up, we can use six subjects towards our ATAR. So once we've calculated um, our study scores and they have been scaled, VTAC comes up with an aggregate score. And then again, every year, depending on the strength of the competition, that gets converted into an ATAR. So what I've got here are a couple of samples. Something we find every year is that there can be real challenges in working out well, what does a good ATAR require? What does, it, what does it look like in terms of marks? So I've got some sample ATARs here. Before I provide the ATAR, it's about having a look and seeing what you think. Have a chat um, amongst yourselves or whoever's watching the screen. So here we've got a student who's got, um, you know, a pretty standard program, English, Health, Biology, Further Maths and PE. You can see that their results are, you know, all C pluses and Bs. So their study scores have equated to 29, 30, 28, 30 and 24. And then you can see the scaling. 
Their bottom class, their weakest class was PE. So they have got 10%, so 2.2 towards that aggregate. And their aggregate there is 109.2. So that ends up equating to a 55.9. So that's, that's an example there of a mid-range ATAR score. So that's a student who's done better than or ranked 55.9% above the rest of the U12 cohort across the state. Next, we've got a student who has done English, legal, chemistry methods, lit and informatics. So we can see here that there's, you know, they're really strong in English and legal and then some Bs and Cs further down. Um, it's interesting to have a look at the scaling here. You can see that there is some scaling happening there. They've got an aggregate score of 145.9 and they've ended up there with an ATAR score of 88.35. And just one more example for you to have a look at. All right, this is a student who's done really quite exceptionally well here. And they've got a 90.05. So it starts to give you a bit of a sense about what sort of scores are required and what sort of work ethic is required to be getting particular ATAR scores. Um, it's really tricky talking about ATAR scores and study scores because we know that they can be a particularly stressful experience for students who feel a lot of pressure around getting good marks and working hard. We want students to be aspirational. We want them to work as hard as they possibly can to achieve the best they can. But, you know, just before I finish up, I did want to provide a little bit of perspective about what working your hardest is. And for some people, an ATAR of 30 might be the absolute best that that student can achieve. And that's actually okay. Um, what we want to make sure is that we're not killing ourselves for the ATAR score, but that we are working really hard to do our best. Um, and, you know, I love this, this quote, that if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. And what we want to make sure is that we're allowing everybody at Gisborne the opportunity to work to their strengths. And we know that not everyone is, is looking for that top ATAR. But we also know that there are many of you out there who are really wanting to push and do as well as you possibly can. So that's really all we can ask is that everyone's working their hardest to do their best, um, whatever that might look like for you. So I'll finish up there. I know that was a very, very quick overview of study scores and ATAR scores. We are more than happy to provide you with lots of additional resources if you're looking to get more of an understanding about those processes or to have a chat with you. Um, it's obviously just a bit difficult in the time frame to spend too much more time on them. So hopefully that was a, a good little snapshot. I am handing back to Lauren now. Thank you very much. All right, so as Sarah mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, coursework and that um, difference between attaining a pass or obtaining a satisfactory outcome in um, your units and levels of achievement. So achieving those, those really good grades that I know lots of you are looking for. So the VCA program, just to, to summarize it and remind it is that Students completing year 12 will have attained between 10 and 12, one and two units when they were in 2020. And they may have also attained a three, four sequence if they accelerated. So that's what Sarah was talking about before when we talk about students that have a sixth subject, they usually have attained that while they're in year 11. And as mentioned earlier, there is the English requirement where students must have units from English, English language or literature. In year 12 at Gisborne, students complete five unit three, four sequence, including those mandatory English units. At Gisborne, we also have the 4SP program. And in year 12, this program aims to prepare students for academic success, further study and life beyond school. And this program is going to be really even more essential in 2021, because this is where we're going to hopefully provide our students with that um, any of those missed skills that they might have missed out on during home learning um, periods of time in, in year 11. 
because we have, as you can see on the bottom there, we have our tutoring program. Now, this is a, an initiative that is statewide and running in, in all government schools. At Gisborne, we've employed two staff members who are going to be working with um, our students and trying to address the impact that COVID's had on our students particularly those that have expected that lower than expected growth and those that might have missed out on some of those really key skills so that they can achieve their potential in 2021. So that doesn't mean necessarily that students that just are performing at a really low level, but students that didn't progress. So even if a student was already um, performing at a really high level, but they didn't have that growth that we might have otherwise expected, they'll also be um, involved in being picked up by this program. The other thing that we'll be doing in 4SP this year is we're running a few sessions through a company called Elevate. So the students, I don't know if any of the students have spoken to you at home perhaps, but they had a session yesterday um, on study skills and how to organize themselves and get that, make their study effective throughout the year. Um, we have another couple of, of those type sessions going on, um, one after the GAT and, and later in the year. And then we've also booked in revision lectures for um, about 15 of our subject areas already. So we'll try and get every subject area covered by a revision lecture. Um, but they're uh, where we're having people come to the school um, and provide a revision lecture and revision materials um, extra to what the students will already get in class, uh, just to support them at the end of the year. I was actually talking to a couple of students today that did do an accelerated subject and had these revision lectures last year and they found them really useful and the materials in particular. So. I'm really glad that we can offer those to our students here at Gisborne again in 2021. We'll also be working through the tertiary application process and um, practice exams and exam skills type things in that 4SP program. So it's a really great um, time that we allow and provide our students to really build those skills. All right, so moving on to our coursework requirements. So. This last year, um, the English faculty trial to process that was really around some clear um, and clearly communicated coursework requirements, um, which aim to improve the achievement of each individual student. We've now broadened that out and that will be relevant to all classes. So the the focus of this and the purpose of this is really to lift achievement levels by increasing the completion rates of coursework, including classwork and homework. We know that if students do more of the classwork, if they're engaged in the classwork and the homework, then that's going to result in a, um, or give the student an outcome that is more um, in line with their potential. So the other element of this process is to improve parent communication and to um, have a bit more transparent tracking of student progress so that you as the family and, and the student themselves are really aware of, of how they're going, what needs to be done, what's absolutely mandatory. So the key here is that the more coursework that's completed, we know that that results in better outcomes. All right. So students have been provided with a minimum amount of coursework requirements for each of their subjects. Okay, so these are things that will be submitted for teacher feedback for each outcome. If students are failing to submit that work one week prior to, the, to any um, assessment task, parents are going to be notified via email. So some of those emails um, you might have started to see um, come out. Hopefully, hopefully you haven't yet, but there are uh, have been a couple of emails that have started to go out just to let. Um, families know that coursework isn't where it where it needs to be prior to some of these first assessment tasks so I know that some subjects have already had a SAC English um, sorry psychology and legal for example and I know that English have a SAC next week by notifying parents early this enables you to work with your students to give them an opportunity to help complete that work prior to the SAC because we know that if they've completed more of that work, they're more likely to be successful in that assessment task. So what I've got up here is just an example of what some of the coursework looked 
looks like in, in the English um, faculty. Obviously, this will be really different depending on the subject area and depending on the, um, the, the skills that are being, being taught and the understanding that needs to be demonstrated. Okay, so in, in the English case, we're talking about practice essays, we're talking about a comprehension test, we're talking about lots of planning of writing but that might be different in, um, in a biology class or a maths class, et cetera. What this means is, and this little table here will give you a, a, an understanding of how we will monitor and support students. So you can see in that green line at the top that students who complete the coursework requirements and pass the SAC, which is obviously going to be the vast majority of our students. There's not going to be any follow-up required, the students demonstrated the key skills and the key knowledge required to pass that outcome, to get their satisfactory. They will also get a score for that outcome, which is what will be submitted to BCAR. Then we've got students that completed the coursework, but might not have passed the SAC. Those students have still been able to demonstrate key knowledge to get that S but that will have an impact on their score. Their score is obviously not going to be um, what, what we would like to see, um, the one that gets submit, submitted to VCAR. We'll also be having a conference with, between the teacher and the student just to help support them and provide guidance as to how they can ensure that they're tracking where they should be. Then we've got students who do not complete the coursework but might have been able to pass the SAC. And what we're hoping is that these are the students that have been caught um, by our process, by our communication, and that they've then had an opportunity to try and complete that prior to the SAC. And so that therefore they've been able to build the skills um, and knowledge required to be able to be successful. And then finally, we have this group down the bottom here who have not completed the coursework and have not passed the, the assessment task. So these are the students that are really of concern. So here there's going to be obviously more significant monitoring by the senior school, some parent contact, and students will need to complete a redemption because they have not yet met the requirements of the, of the outcome. So moving forward, I'll just talk about the redemption process a little bit here. So redemptions are, are an, a task that is completed by students where they've not yet met the outcome through the SAC or the coursework that they've been required to do. Redemptions take place in supervised SAC conditions and they can be booked in on any Thursday evening. So teachers will contact families and students to organise which Thursday evening um, the student will sit their SAC after school. Part of the reason that we do this is to ensure that they're not missing any other classes and we're not taking away from uh, any other work that they need to be doing, which might compound the issue of them being behind or not being up to date. Obviously, this is a process again, that where teachers are going to be communicating with parents around this, and you will get um, both a phone call in the case of a redemption and um, not a notification email as well. Obviously, this is not where we want to see students, but it is a really important that we have this process in place because ultimately our goal here is for all of our students to successfully attain their VCE. And for that, they need to successfully pass all their outcomes. And this is a, a key process that's required for some students in some circumstances. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, pass over to Belinda O'Meara and Greg Savinos, who are going to talk to you about how you can support your students um, to achieve their best in 2021. Thank you, Ms. Anglin. Uh, my name is Greg Savinos. I'm the Year 12 coordinator this year, and I'll be, you could say, shepherding your orders and everyone else through this interesting time. Now, Year 12 is, for those of you who've had children go through it already, is a challenging year. For those of you who haven't, uh, well, you're in for an interesting experience. The, one of the key things that students have to find 
in the course of this year is a balance. They've got to balance things such as their school life. They've got to balance their home life. They actually do have to be members of the household. They have to balance in some cases their work life and the social life that does continue. It's an important year socially for many people and they have to plan their future life. It, it's an important phase of life and there's a lot of things happening and there's a lot of things that both the students can do to help themselves and the, you as parents can do to help your son. And on top of that, there's personal life. There are things that happen is a normal part of life. Yeah, you know, some people say how, yeah, you know, once the school's over, they can get on with their lives. No, this is part of life. It's, it's everything involved in life happens this year in much more fashion than other years. Now, the good news is no student is doing this alone. Every student is doing this as part of a team. And every student has a team on their side. The first person on everybody's team is themselves. Every student, I've gone too far, every student must you know, rely on themselves. They must have confidence in their abilities. They must basically look out for themselves and look out for their own interests. The other person who's on every student's team are their teachers. Your teachers have an absolutely vested interest in your success. They want to do everything they can to be as successful as possible. Obviously, you have to meet them halfway, but they will definitely above and beyond what is required to get you to where you need to be, if you're willing to do it. Families are absolutely central parts of the year 12 experience. Uh, no student does year 12 on their own. Everybody is supported by family of some kind or another. And this can be in all sorts of combinations. But every student that we have, every young person we work with, has people at home and has people who can support them. And those people the friendship groups that all students have are absolutely crucial. Um, this year is a special time for the, for the group of young people and supporting each other through this difficult time can make such a difference to everybody in the course of the year. There are also support mechanisms here at the Business Secondary Support Structures to help year 12 students get through the year. Uh, and, uh, this, the, some of the support mechanisms include, for instance, your year level leader, such as myself, I'm a key, one of the key people that support you. If there are issues for a student or for a parent and you need to discuss it with somebody, I'm certainly available and I will do whatever I can to help. But also on top of that, we've got every student is a member of a mentor team. Every student uh, meets or mentor every day and they also take part in our 4SB program, which happens uh, the support service and there are teachers assigned to that to actually support students in developing study skills and as well as careers options and looking for people who are available to them. On top of that, speaking of careers, we have uh, Mr. DeCoolin, who'll be speaking later, who provides a career service and we provide an extensive career service for all students to actually help them find their pathway and to find their direction in life. And well-being. We have a strong well-being section, and this our, our people in well-being are, are well versed in supporting students through these very difficult times, and they, they can deal with just about anything. They're uh, true professionals, and they can they can provide the support that the students need. And already, you know, they've already been working with our year twelve cohort, and also our senior school leaders. Now, before I go on to the next part. I'd like to introduce Ms. Amira, who's going to tell you a little bit about the services provided by the Wellbeing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Savanos. Um, my name is Belinda Amara, and I am the Student Wellbeing Coordinator at Gisborne Secondary College. We have a team that are here to help support students and their families throughout the year. It's really important that. Uh, if students or families are experiencing um, factors that will impact on their child's engagement in their education, that they come and see us early. Um, we can work on strategies to help um, best prepare students for uh, their education. Also, we are there for students to 
we want to be responsive to students needs so if there are things that students want this year please come down and have a chat to us we're running uh, yoga classes for the sevens happy to run those for year 12 so if there's anything that you would particularly want come and see us so I think most year 12s are familiar with the wellbeing service and I think most parents are too so please let us know if there are any issues I'm going to hand you back now to Mr. Savanos. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amira. Now, a couple of things that, well, a few more things that I really would like to discuss. Uh, firstly, um, oh, we've also got the role of parents. Now, to the parents listening to this, uh, you know you have a vital role in the upbringing of those young people that have reached year 12 well your role as a year 12 parent is absolutely crucial uh, you are probably the most important people uh, as far as your sons and daughters are concerned and for a start you know parents are there to help keep the balance between school work and home parents are there as actually to provide stability and to provide a safe place parents provide you you know you really need to provide your your offspring with a nice, quiet and secure place to study, uh, somewhere where they can set themselves up and actually get on with the work that has to be done. And there is plenty of work, as you've already heard. Uh, also, there, there is the fundamentals, you know, feed, clothe and shelter them like you've been doing for so many years. Uh, and don't be too surprised if they eat more than usual this year. It's one of those years where the fridge is a therapeutic device rather than anything else. And this is a difficult one. Your job is to be a parent, not a friend. Now, there is a distinction. You're there to provide the mature adult support. Obviously, you know, we want you to have good relations with your sons and daughters, but you're there to provide mature adult. Even if your children, or even if your sons and daughters are 18 or over, they might be legally adults, but still under your care. And, and this is absolutely crucial. In the course of year 12, there will be crisis times. There may be crisis times. And the people who know our students better than anybody else, better than their teachers, better than their friends, are you. If you notice something is wrong and you will be the first to pick this up, please let us know. We absolutely need you to keep us in the loop if there's anything going on, anything that needs to be that needs to be dealt with, or any support that your your son and daughter might need. Uh, now, I expect, and and in my experience, this happens automatically. Most parents do that. But please be aware: we are we welcome any feedback from you, how your child is doing, and what is stressing them, what is the problem, what difficulties they're facing. If we don't know about it, we often can't deal with. It. But between us, if we all keep our eyes open, if we all aim to improve and to support these young people through this challenging year, we can make it a year to remember a year that's actually something that's, that's that will be a positive experience. And it can be a positive experience. I hope I haven't said it's going too dark. Year 12 can be a wonderful experience. But we need your feedback. We need your contribution. And the last thing, and this is important for parents to keep in mind, it's absolutely vital that every young person doing year 12 at the school be at school when they're meant to be at school. Being present at classes is absolutely crucial. Every class missed is such a lost opportunity. And every class missed can actually send a student back further than the one less than that two years. It's important that you encourage your sons and daughters to come to every day at school that they can and to basically deal and to support them to actually be present in every way. Now, of course, of course, if your child is sick, if your child is physically unwell, please don't send them to school. You know, they, there are medical needs that have to be dealt with. But in general, uh, encourage your sons and daughters to come to school every day, to come to every class, to participate in every activity, because it all builds up together, it all creates the, the that is year 12. 
So to the parent, you have a massive job ahead of you. Uh, we will support you. Uh, we will, and, and we recognize how important your role is. And I hope the students listening here appreciate that their parents actually really do have their best interests at heart and they might actually know a few things. Um, when I was 18, I had I was amazed at how ignorant my father was. I just did not know so much. By the time I was 25, I was stunned by how much he'd learned in that short period of time. He hadn't changed, it was me. To the students, respect your parents, treat them with respect and be kind to them they will be kind to you. Now, some of the overall resources we have, uh, some of the resources available to get through the year, there's the college itself, you have each other, uh, this is the students, look after each other, you are in this together, you are sharing this experience, you are sharing this experience you will remember for the rest of your lives with or without therapy, and your parents and your family, your siblings, your, your relatives, they are important to you, they are people who matter, they are people who in my experience, in most cases, have your best interests at heart. And there are also, of course, useful websites for study as well as useful websites in terms of determining what our careers are. So there's lots of information. Uh, there are tertiary open days coming up, which are very important for people trying to work out what courses and what pathways to follow. Uh, they start usually in uh, July and August, and we will be keeping all students informed about those open days. But it's in your interest to also start looking for it now. Uh, <clears throat> year 12 is just a stepping stone. Year 12 is just part of your, of your journey into the rest of the world. And it's important when you're going on any journey that you keep your eyes open, to look out for where you're going. And that's what this is about. Okay. And without trying to confuse people too much, because you know sometimes people take this message a bit literally, the theme for this year. And I think for life in general, uh, I think it's a good one. I've stolen it from an ancient Greek poet. Um, those of you who, those of my students who come to class, know what I'm talking about. Those who haven't, unfortunately, go, are going to learn what I'm talking about. This year is the year to be, and this is addressed to our students, to be the best you can be and to be the bravest you can be because this year will require courage. It will require determination. It will also require you to do the best you can. And if you do that, you will have every reason to be proud of what you've done. And to the parents, if, you're, if you can encourage your son and daughter or daughter to do the same, to do the best they can, and to show the courage and support them in that, everybody thanks. will be so much better off. You will have every reason to be proud of you. Okay, I'm just about done here. I'm going to hand over to um, Mr. Cullen. <laughs> And he will uh, take you to the next stage. Uh, all the best. And uh, remember, if you need to contact me, my name's Greg Savanos. I'm available here at the school. You can contact me by phone and also by email. But we will. We are here to support you. Our team is here to support you. And your sons and daughters are very important. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm John Jekyll and I, uh, I'm part of the, uh, the careers team um, at the school. Now look, I, we fully understand at Gisborne Secondary College that, um, that you know, all parents and um, as well as students uh, do require some personal support. And I don't want to, I don't want to change, uh, turn careers into another subject where students are running around trying to research um, you know, options for next year. They've got enough to do um, in their classroom and um, study at home. But that's where we come into it. Uh, look, with the study sessions or even uh, making a one-to-one -one booking, uh, we're there to um, answer any queries or or even just package something, uh, whatever your intentions are for next year, and we can work with that. Now, look, um, to, to make uh, the right... Uh, decisions for yourself, you know, look, we, we are there to um, uh, help students identify the appropriate pathways. And um, and just to offer you what we've got on the um, uh, the services that we offer, um, throughout the year, if uh, students do wish to maybe change pathways uh, for next year, we, we uh, there are apprenticeships that are still available and cadetships and traineeships for next year. and. Uh, We've got some connections with employment agencies as an option. And I would like to think that 
a majority of students and not just uh, putting all the eggs in one basket and just choosing a particular subject at uni, uh, but maybe we can just keep that open and um, look at some of the, uh, the trainerships, um, uh, looking at uh, some of the courses at TAFE and or university, but, uh, keep, but we'll keep that open. Um, look, throughout the year, we'll let you uh, know of some career expos. Um, for example, um, uh, some industries have always uh, managed to help us out, you know, just give more information out about a particular uh, industry that the students are unaware of, and it may complement something that they're already um, interested in anyway. Um, if students are still a bit confused about, you know, what they want to, they would like to do uh, next year, look, throughout the year, we, we can... Uh, bit of one-to-one -one cruise counselling, but uh, there's some careers testing that we can actually do to give students a bit of a bit of a heads up into uh, what would uh, what sort of career would suit them. Um, quite often, I hear students talk about um, gap year opportunities, and uh, uh, very open to uh, discuss that with parents and students. But um, quite a few establishments, like uh, or the ADF, they do offer um, a gap year uh, cadetship, and and uh, and that's something that uh, will be um, showcasing uh, throughout the year if students are uh, interested. Um, look, we, we do help students with a, a job interviews one-to-one. -one. Um, if you are moving um, interstate at the end of the year and uh, we can give you some, uh, if we can give you and support you with information, um, uh, universities in other states. Um, we also, um, we have a very strong relationship with each of the unions and TAFEs and we make sure that uh, we do let you know of the open days and uh, when they when they start, and and of course, look uh, any concern with students coming to see me or the, or any members of the careers team, happy to um, sit down with them to discuss um, uh, any options for the future. Um, look, there's also throughout the year, um, universities do offer um, uh, scholarships for next year, and uh, we'll let you know. Uh, when they come about, and uh, we can certainly help um, each uh, member of the, uh, each student with their applications. Um, we also help with um, subject selection or course selection counselling in regards to some students have actually picked certain uni courses, and we basically just assist them and, and make sure that they've met the requirements. You know, for example, um, you know, you've got an engineering course that may require. Um, a study score of a, a, at least 25 in math methods. And, and we, we basically uh, are there to support and make sure that the students have, have done the right thing. Um, if they haven't, then we just suggest to them, okay, there is an alternative. There's another way of getting into that course. And, and also some courses like, um, uh, you could say RMIT, um, if you are going for uh, a design course, you know, they actually, it's not just about the ATAR score that they require, but they might, uh, there might be a selection uh, task. And usually um, they, they come about uh, during August and we just let those particular students know that, okay, um, here's a selection task, you need to uh, submit this by a certain day. So we work one-to-one -one with the student um, with that. Um, some students are probably unaware of what courses there are at university. We tend to go with the traditional type of courses, but. Um, there is so many out there and, and what we try to do is just complement exactly what the student or, or the family are, are looking at and, and we suggest alternative courses. And um, particularly, you know, we have a number of people you now wanting to get into nursing and, um, but we also, you know, showcase what other uh, pathways there are in the, in the health industry. Um, and also there's... Um, also special consideration, um, if you've had a tough time throughout the year for uh, any personal reasons, um, health or, or something, some um, circumstances outside your control, uh, we do help students um, with their CEASE application where they do get spe special consideration to, uh, to be considered um, in um, a, a tertiary uh, course. So we can help you with that. And, and we'll let you know throughout the year when those deadlines are. Um, and as well as um, early entry courses, um, uh, Latrobe have got an Aspire program. So if you've done any uh, volunteer work in the last few years, uh, you may get um, uh, early entry into the course for next year, um, which 
you may not need the, the, the ATAR score of 70, but uh, the minimum requirement would be as long as you, um, you know, you meet the, the study score requirements, uh, you can get straight in and um, you get an offer before anybody else. And, and again, um, a number of students uh, largely took that on board and, and were uh, very successful. And, and we'll let you know um, when those due dates are. Um, sometimes, you know, um, even with VET, um, you know, after a study this year, some, you know, students may decide, look, I don't really want to pursue with tertiary education. We can just sit, you, sit down with you and, and look at some of the, uh, the TAFE VET courses that um, are on offer. And the VTAC applications, which basically start in September, um, we help one to one, and uh, and we can basically just uh, assist you with what sort of courses are out there and and what's suitable and what um, if, you, if the student has met the um, requir uh, personal requirements. And also on top of that, once you get your ATAR score, um, or I should say your study score, there's some courses that may require you to finish, uh, you know, for example, a 25 in English uh, study score that. Now, uh, and if a student gets 22, um, look, we basically sit there and just try to, um, you know, help the, the student with that to look at alternative courses. Um, and also, and also we, uh, we will keep up with uh, weekly careers news and uh, we'll, we'll basically uh, make sure that that gets it um, uh, put out on the, on the shared drive and, um, and by all means, you know, once a student or, or a parent, you know, yourself, do get some, um, you see some interesting uh, bits that if uh, you want to pursue uh, from that careers newsletter, by all means, get in contact with me and my team and uh, we'll be happy to uh, follow through with that. At the same time, look, I'm not expecting um, students to run around and do all the research. We will fully support everyone by actually um, putting information out there for you, so it's going to work. It's going to work uh, both ways. But most importantly, it's uh, if there are any concerns or any issues or something that um, yeah, you want to follow up with, by all means, um, uh, you can send me an email. Uh, we can have an um, uh, make an appointment to have a meeting. Uh, students can um, contact me um, on on Teams directly and or during their study sessions, they can just come into the office and uh, we can follow through with that. And it's most important, most importantly, it's not just about next year, but we try to package things that, okay, whatever you decide next year, um, I also, and we also work with you to see what it looks like the year after and the year after that. So making sure that it's a correct uh, um, pathway. So um, as I said, any concerns, um, you just need to give uh, the careers team um, a bit of a call and, and we'll keep you informed of all the deadlines and uh, anything, um, any vital information that um, you need to, uh, you know, uh, you need to make some of those decisions and follow through with the Okay, so look, and that's all from me, um, but if there's any uh, questions and or, um, anybody else? Yep. All right. Okay, thank you, guys. All right, so I'll just work out where my cursor is so I can stop sharing the screen. There we go. All right, so that's sort of bringing um, to an end this presentation this evening. I do want to thank you again for taking the time out of your evening to attend in this format. We were just saying over to the side that we think we've all sort of hit Zoom overload and it's not the most ideal format, but it is the, the safest format at the moment. So I really want to thank you for persevering with it this evening. Uh, I know Mr. Morley has just popped in the chat um, the opportunity for anyone who's got any questions to, to pop them in and we'll try and get back to, get back to you um, as soon as possible if you've got any of those. You can always email myself, Richard Palmer, or Sarah Rose if you've got any questions in relation to tonight's presentation or any of the speakers that you've heard from tonight. Other than that, we just want to say good luck to you. Good luck to all the students out there. We know that we've got an exciting and enjoyable Year 12 ahead of us, uh, one that's going to be full of a few challenges, I'm sure. 
but we're really looking forward to the rest of the year, especially one that started so well. So thank you for your time tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. Good night.